Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the importance of taking off into a headwind. So uh, this is a common technique uh, most people think uh, when we're taking off and landing, uh, we always want to fly into the headwind, but uh, just kind of take that for granted just how critically important it is. So what we're going to do is to do a really, really simple experiment with our Cessna 152, our lovely Ellington Airport here today, a simple airport for this purpose because it's so darn short, and we got a 152 to uh, really scare the crap out of us. So uh, let's go get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my weather here. And I notice right now I'm facing mostly to the north. So I'm going to grab my wind level real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and now program this to be coming right at us. About 10 looks pretty good. You can see that sock is uh, very happy in our direction. We're going to go ahead and crank it up to, uh, we'll do a pretty substantial wind today. We'll do a 15 knotter here. A uh, 15 knotter is pretty substantial. Um, that would be, that's a lot. That's a lot. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to start by executing our initial takeoff here. I'm going to apply full power. I'm going to let the airplane kind of zip down the runway itself here. Remember, we're rotating at about 45 knots, which is uh, not very much, but it just gives you an idea of how many of the different lines that we're going to be crossing here. So there's about 40. There's about 45. I'm going to give it a tug, and we're in the air. Man, I love the 152. <laughs> just got to go. And now uh, you can see here that we have plenty of runway remaining. I'm just going to continue my little climb over here and naughty, naughty third person. And you can see that I was able to easily get to the end of this runway. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take us around and get us ready for landing. All right, there's our approach. Uh, you can see we're getting banged around pretty hard, actually. Um, as everybody knows, uh, when you're coming in for landings like this, uh, it does get very, very interesting. Another thing we found out, too, is uh, with this new patch for Flight Sim, uh, they did change some of the controls around on me. So I'm um, having to kind of learn everything again here. And I'm just kind of enjoying my normal approach here. About 55 knots would be pretty good. We really should be coming in closer to 60, only on account of the fact that it is very windy. And of course, we could actually kick one flap out in order to make it a little bit safer of a landing here. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. You know, we're not going for, you know, a master class and uh, getting this thing down on the ground. Uh, you've seen plenty of videos all about that, so I'm not worried. Yeah, we're getting a little close to a departure speed there. So we're going to give it just a little bit more. And no, I'm not exaggerating these motions. Uh, this is just uh, Microsoft's way of doing gusts. There we go. We'll get ourselves all nice and lined up here. There we go. You know, one of the things I always say is, uh, you know, as a pilot, it's uh, really important to just kind of go with it. Kind of go with it. We'll go ahead and get that nice and centered. And you can see roughly how much runway we used here. Uh, about half. And uh, you can see that almost ended horrifically. So let's go reset everything again. And uh, go ahead and see what happens when we change that 15-knot headwind into a 15-knot tailwind. And that's looking pretty good. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh boy. So we have 1,800 feet available. And on our previous takeoff, we used about 900 of those feet. So this is a 15 knot tailwind. And uh, let's see what happens. Well, the first thing I notice is um, it's being very difficult to keep it centered. Uh, we're getting the weather in effect here. And I'm actually going to have to push my controls forward slightly just to get a little bit more authority from the front wheel. So if you remember before, we were in the air already. And uh, right now, I'm looking at the end of the runway getting awfully close. Getting pretty close. There's 45. Let's give it a little tug right there, and let's get ourselves airborne. And you can see here that um, we made it. We made it. But uh, we almost didn't get through those two trees that I see on either side of me right there. Now, that's not very safe. Um, again, that was um, about double. And keep in mind that 15 knots of headwind took us off at halfway. 15 knots of tailwind doubled our landing run. Now, you're probably sitting here going, this is going to make your landing interesting. Oh, boy. What I do for science. Okay, then. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, two clicks of flaps. Uh, we're only going to come in with two, only on account of the fact. And I'm being pushed so hard right now. I'm at zero throttle, and I'm going to make the runway just at zero throttle. I'm actually having to... Um, just, oh, boy. Whoa. Okay, easy. Easy. I can do this. I can do this. I'm actually going to have to come in five knots slow. And if I don't come down five knots slow, there's just no way I'm getting on the ground here. Whoa. Oh my gosh, I'm having to, whoa, whoa. Sorry about that in your ears. Whoa, oh, whoa, that would have killed us. Wow. Okay, so uh, take a look here. Oh, I wish I had an instant replay of me hitting the right right tire and basically shearing it off. Um, so a couple things there. Uh, first of all, it was extremely difficult to control in a 15 knot wind, and that's why I picked the 152 today. It's just to give you an idea of how insanely dangerous that is. Uh, the second thing is you probably observed when we landed the first time, we took less than half the runway. Uh, we landed the second time, and yes, we didn't technically use the entire runway, but you can see that we used a ton of it. 
Now you're probably going, okay, this is an okay demonstration. You've made your point. You've made your point. You know, turbulence is dangerous. I gotcha. And the headwind point. But the most important thing to be thinking about here is other aircraft. Um, the 152 is especially good at this. And uh, the reason it's so darn good at this is because it's got relatively low speeds associated with it. But the other problem is, is imagine I was doing this in a TBM. You know, mathematically, I could have gotten airborne pretty much in that distance. But if with that tailwind, we would have ended up in the woods. Enjoy.